second part in our two-part series comparing the same magazine 20 years apart. So on the left, we have our September 2003 edition of Vogue. On the right, we have the September 2023 edition of Vogue. So in part one, we did some initial comparisons based on the exterior of the magazine. Then we did our in-depth flip through of the 2003 Vogue. Here in part two, we're going to be doing our in-depth flip through of the 2023 Vogue. Then we're going to be doing an in-depth comparison of the trends, the overall content, the percentage of ads in each magazine, and some miscellaneous thoughts. I made notes as we went and flipped through the 2003 magazine. And I'll do the same as we recognize trends in the 2023 magazine. So if you haven't seen part one yet and you'd like to watch that first, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Otherwise, let's get into the 2023 Vogue. Before I open this, I want to tell you some of the biggest trends from 2003 in case you didn't watch that part. I would say the biggest overall trend was something that they called classic textures. So that was like tweed, herringbone, fur, things like that. The 2003 letter from the editor said that it was, quote, a season of discreetly elegant looks with no trace of boho frills. So kind of just in general, it was a more formal vibe in 2003 than I would have thought based on my memory of that year. But once I saw it in the magazine, I did remember that being a thing. The classic fabrics, even with casual looks, people would just throw on like a tweed blazer with low-rise jeans. Okay, so now it is time to look through this year's September edition of Vogue 2023 at the time I'm filming this. I'm excited to look at this because I really haven't looked at any, like, fashion coverage for fall this year. These are quite classic looks. Naomi is wearing these sort of gloves that were very popular in the 2003, um, what are they called? Glam Gloves was the name they put to the trend uh, in 2003. So we start off with an ad for Lancome's La Vie et Belle perfume. And it says New Iris Absolute. So presumably that's a flanker, a spinoff of La Vie et Belle. Oh, this is an extension of the so it has their signatures. That's fun. And then we have a few different versions of La Vie et Belle ads. With Zendaya. And I don't know who these other two models are. And then Julia Roberts here. Oh, okay. They have a smell thing. I'm gonna smell it and tell you what it smells like. Okay, so I just smelled it. And it actually has two flaps. One to let you smell the original La Vie et Belle. And then one for this new one, the Iris Absolute. That is really fun that they let you compare it. To be totally honest, La Vie et Belle just smells like perfume to me. It smells like a perfume counter. <laughs> this new one, though, there's something warmer about it and like more delicious. And it seems maybe a little stronger. I liked it. The variation in the bottle is nice too with the arches. Then we have a Lancome uh, Paris ad here, just a little more general, I guess, than the perfume. So immediately, that is kind of like the 2003 Vogue, where a lot of the ads were just the same company getting a bunch of pages in a row. And now we have a Prada ad. I love this picture of this flower. It's beautiful. I love the dark shadows. And more Prada. So is it gonna be like like they're all looking at a flower? She's gazing upon this flower, which kind of looks like a rose made of feathers. She's gazing upon this flower, which is a long tube situation. Now we have a couple of Dior ads. These are gorgeous 
things were a little more loose. So we got a Chanel and she appears to be holding her hand as though she's holding a cigarette with no cigarette. We have a classic fabric with what is it called? A classic texture with this tweed. Uh, but tweed is always Chanel, which is something we talked about in the 2003. It doesn't need to be a year of classic fabrics for them to have it. These feathers are kind of interesting. Do you see how this is a collection of formal clothes, but she looks so much, so kind of relaxed, like she's trying to give up effortlessness. It's quite a different energy from 2003 in that sense. This feels more formal, more sort of, I don't know, stiff's the word. But even though it feels more stiff, the clothing items themselves are flowy. Whereas a lot of those classic fabrics from 2003 were quite stiff, so maybe that's why everything looked so structured. Now a Gucci ad. Oh, I love these shoes. So it's like a slip-on sort of heel, and it's really pretty. Seafoam green color, can you see? Got a bamboo handle, back, no logo, bamboo toggle. That is a rather classic fabric, interestingly. This is beautiful. I love the red color against this white background with the, sort of like, it goes from pink to blue, the tone. See how she's so relaxed, like her, her attitude, her pose flowing of the clothes. Her shirt's a bit unbuttoned. Her hair, too. It kind of seems like it's designed to look like it wasn't styled much at all, so giving it an, a more effortless look. Like we're trying to be effortless in 2023. <laughs> Astonishing orange. Hermes Paris. And we have this horse running by. As she runs the other way, she's on the move. It's certainly an effortful look, but she's flowy. Her hair looks more natural. I like these colors in this ad. So it's this astonishing orange, and the picture is mostly green. But her hair, she has red hair in orange ginger way. Orange is Hermes's color, so that's kind of fun that they're showing the orange and ginger hair. Maybe on the next page there'll be more orange or we're going to another advertiser. Not some more a mess. Huh. So here we have like this knit look. It's kind of what color would this be? Like a deep fuchsia. And then is the astonishing orange the cones this time? Not sure. Mendy Roma. What a beautiful dress, this lovely light blue knit dress, and I like the pairing of it with the combat boots. I feel like I could make a fairly similar outfit to this from things I already have in my closet. That's exciting. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh my gosh. I love this look. So it's like a leather shift dress over that blue or maybe it's, it was a dress. This kind of sheer pale blue long sleeve with the ship dress over. I really enjoyed that look. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. So are these over the knee boots that are kind of meant to look like ripped jeans? Is that what's happening here? I love an over the knee boot. I don't know how I feel about the ripped jeans element personally, but I like it overall a lot. I feel that you could call this a lingerie-inspired dress. And that was one of the 2003 trends. A lot of lingerie-inspired things. And now, an ad for Tiffany & Co. 
Caravaggio's coming to mind, but I think that might be 
my gosh, our club's gonna be one of the trends that the years have in common. Some more Max Mara with more, more gloves, glam gloves, as they said it in the 2003 edition. She's a little too sure, so I'm covering her. For you do purposes. Chivalry and again we see that pushed back casual hair, which probably wasn't casual at all when they did it on set, but meant to look casual. Laurel Bian Biana. I can't tell if this is an ad for the, this must be an ad for her clothes, right? The sheets stand out to me more. Alexander McQueen at Oh, I love that rose. I'll probably go through later and grab some things to use for a collage out of this magazine. I'll get this flower for sure. Menswear inspired is the vibe. An ad for Nordstrom. Ball forward 20. So we have this sort of shaggy fur that we've seen a few times now. Sequence over here. One thing that's notable with that I have thought of now that we've seen an ad for a department store was in the 2003 edition. Magazine. There are an absolute ton of ads for brands that also mentioned where you could buy them, like what department store. So there are a lot of ads that were kind of collapsed like that. Whereas here, it does mention what she's wearing, Stella McCartney in this picture. But it was much more like a dual ad and tons of them in the 2003. That's a pretty dress. That's all my sequence so far. Swarovski and head gauges are in for fall. I wonder if that's a piece you can actually buy or if it's just for the picture. Okay, so the table of contents again. Now we're at page 108 and we've had two pages of contents so far. Similar portion to 2000. Yves Saint presents myself, but with no E, myself, the new masculine refillable fragrance starring Austin Butler. Very masculine, has like a sharpness to it. It reminds me of Abercrombie for some reason. I know Abercrombie used to spray the heck out of their stores with the fragrances. I wonder if this shares notes in common with some Abercrombie, Abercrombie cologne of your. There's something refreshing about it too, though. It's a nice scent. I like the bottle too. <laughs> All black with the clear. It's pretty. An ad for Sex Fifth Avenue. Long boots. Very sort of exaggerated boots so far. She's having the time of her life. I hope my fall is like that. Montclair. Re slash icons. I'm not sure. It just add for something specific. They're just like, hey, remember that we are a mountain logo. Versace. This is really pretty. I enjoy the pink text on this black and white image. This reminds me of that famous Julia Fox makeup look. When she was with Kanye West. It's dramatic eyeliner going out. So we've got some ladies and some various 
years ago, more. But this wasn't an ordinary day on set. This was history being made. Cindy, Naomi, Christy, and Link did together again, conjuring fashion, magic, as only they can. British Vogues. Edward Enifal was the consummate editor, mixing a throwback spirit with the energy and relevance of now, and his collaborator, the brilliant young photographer Raphael Pavarotti, was in his element too, at the center of so much celestial star power. The scene had wattage, pure and simple, but there was uncommon warmth too. These four supers, indomitable women, each of them, know one another so well, and I know Vogue so well that the proceedings had the air of a family reunion. It was moving for me, a bit like peering backward through a telescope and seeing just how far we've come. And it reminded me that relationships like these have given meaning to editing Vogue for all this year, for all these years. These four women were quite young when I first met them. Girls, really, on the cusp of so much. The distance they've traveled is remarkable, and it came through in everything they've said on set, in our video shoot afterward, and in their interviews with Sally Singer, who wrote the story that accompanies Pavarotti's photographs. Cindy talked about the friendships she's made in her career. It really is like your second family, she said, looking around. Naomi talked about her feeling of sisterhood with the others. When one is down, you pick the other one up. Linda and Christy talked about their lives then and now. Heartbreaks and triumphs and the miracles of parenthood. They're all mothers. So much life in one room. And so much Vogue history. The covers these four have done. The Peter Lindbergh British Vogue cover with all of them. And the lead. Apologies to uh, about none. I don't know if they read the solo covers here in the US. Too many to the name. More boat covers in France, Italy, Spain, and beyond. It's a parade of glamour, a gallery of fashion history. We live in a time when images come and go with the touch of a screen. Longevity is something to be treasured. And oh, yes, there's a documentary this month. A four-part series from Apple TV Plus titled The Supermodels, which tells the story of these four legends and, me and measures their legacy. It's handsomely done, and it gave us the thought to ask them to sit for our September cover in the first place. I'm thrilled to say that this is a shared cover with our collaborators at British Vogue and will appear in many editions around the world. There's history all over this September issue as I look through it. Zadie Smith is something we've had in Vogue before, and whose career we've celebrated over the years. Together with British Vogue, we asked Tyler Mitchell to photograph her for her profile on the occasion of her brilliant sixth novel, The Fraud. Amanda Harlech has been in our pages many times as editor and writer and photographic subject. And she's here again, giving us a charming account of life at her family estate in Wales, where she, and then continued, in about uh, 16 pages. So let's breeze through these ads to get to the uh, rest of the letter from the editor, John Hardy. Uh, some bangles, bright colors. Michael Gores, some neutral 
results are as charming as I'd hoped. There's much more. We have a profile of Daniel Roseberry, the, di the designer Shia Pirelli, who is busy reinventing that historic house and combines intelligence, vulnerability, and honesty in a way that's all too rare in fashion today. The story is written by Nathan Heller and photographed by Annie Leibovitz, who also shot one of Roseberry's muses, Michaela Cole, dressed gorgeously in Shia Pirelli. And we have a fantastic portfolio of romantic, rebellious fashion. Much of it in homage to the late, great Vivian Westwood, shot on the streets of Tokyo by Theo Lu and edited by Gabriella Carefa Johnson. I love shoots like this that capture Vogue's global point of view and depict the latest fashion and beauty looks as they exist in the real world. This one does the trick of reminding me how far flung and connected we are, how small and paradoxically large our world can seem at once. More history in the making. And then we have Anna's Wintour's signature. So, quite a nostalgic letter from the editor in this one. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I think as far as the overall feel of the season. I think it's mostly, she said, where did she say it? Romantic, rebellious fashion. Uh, I think that's mostly what she said when it comes to the vibe of the fashion season. The season. So I'm gonna write that down. Sources of fashion, tickets on sale. So it's a fan of that for an event on October 19th. So now we have a Jimmy Choo ad featuring some riding boots. Mention of some contributors, a glowy ad, more curly hair. And for sync us set really pretty blushing tones. We have kind of a lot of sequins and fringe so far in the ads. And this more tousled there. Oh, I feel like the cricket got way louder. I don't know if it's picking up. I think he might have moved right next to my window. Well, I hope he's having a good night, the cricket, if you can hear him. Now we have an ad for Intimis... Oh, gosh, how do you say that? Intimissimi. I think that's it. Intimissimi. It says, the art of Italian lingerie. And the ad is starring J-Lo. Some credits, an ad for Chanel Foundation, quite a few foundation ads so far. Oh, and so they have a card. Uh, is this a, like a shade match card? I feel like it's going to be super loud if I try and rip it off. So it has three shades that you can swatch and see if you are any of them. And it says there are 35 shades total. I feel like uh, I definitely won't be any of these shades, so maybe I'll just set this up to the side. <laughs> it's interesting that it says um, it's 24 hours, because I think the, the Estee Lauder one said that as well. So now Vogue is uh, advertising their podcast. So in 2003, they were advertising their website. What was it? It was like fashion.com or something like that. But now we're in a podcast era. 
not made by Mid Journey or a tool from Mid Journey, the AI thing. I'm not a huge fan, I guess, of the Ozempic and AI era. Not because those things are necessarily bad, but just because I feel like the way they're being used is not wonderful. So now we have a Brunello Cuccinelli and off whitey beigey looks.
right is when they do trend roundups and they show a lot of examples from the runway. Now an ad for Free People Movement, they've got a QR code too. I'm gonna write that as a trend in the ads. In the Heights, shorter than ever before, the micro mini bang is having a moment. Oh, this is not a train that's for me, but I feel like maybe more sort of alternative, hip, cool ladies might like it. This sort of shorter bang makes me think of uh, Courtney Cox in the Scream movies. In one of them, she has that tiny, tiny bang, much like that. An ad for secret deodorant, Jenny Kane. every season and they show you some color options so it's uh, an ad specifically for this card again if you want to get 15% off on their website you can use the code VOGUE15 V-O-G-15 so like VOGUE15 or use this QR code the offer expires uh, November 1st Perfect. 
perfume maestro uses history to inform his new fragrance. So that's a little piece on Francis Kirk Kirkjian, the perfumer. Now we have quite an interesting ad for Top Golf. Some of my friends like going to that, but I've actually never, I've actually never been. Never not original. The Hauser Collection. Who says you can't have the comfort of sandals in the winter? Emphasis on comfort. QR code. The 2023 way. I don't know if I've ever heard of this brand either. Keen. Here there's a feature on uh, American designer Anne Lowe getting a an exhibit at the Winter Third Museum in Delaware. I don't know if I've ever gone and seen like a fashion display like that. They call it a survey. Um, I would assume that's the same as an exhibit, but I'm not sure. And uh, so hotels and resorts indulge like no one's watching. So we have an ad for the, uh, this hotel chain. Fashion emergency. Wear figs. I have no idea what this is. Is there going to be more info on this page? There is medical apparel for healthcare professionals who know what the September issue is. So there's stuff they are targeting like stylish medical professionals because there's scrubs and stuff for more stylish. Is that what it is? And then she's saving lives and serving looks. Is that what it is? Vogue.com slash shopping. Want to shop like an editor? Discover top trends and seasonal must-haves at Vogue.com slash shopping. So many QR codes. Here we have an advertisement disguised as a feature again. So I'm not going to count any of these things as, as trends. Because it says some things are trends. Love letters. Family and romantic affairs are at the core of fall's best new books. So some pictures on books. I like the way they lay out the page with them going back and forth. Avocado mattress ad. Clark's for the world ad. Shop the Tory LB. That's an ad with a specific shoe. And they have a singer and songwriter. B Badu B. Modeling. And it says, have confidence in yourself and your opinions. And she has quite a maximalist outfit on with this outdoorsy brown shoe. That's a fun way they chose to style it. So here we have a piece on the twisted romance and punky attitude of Tom Pins, a jewelry brand from Belfast that is also in London, New York, and Los Angeles. Rip it up and start again. Your life is waiting. Recreate. CBT ad. Mm. Now, Balenciaga ad. This one has a fold out. Let's see what's inside. So, we've got a colorful pattern dress, a more structured animal print, long to the floor coat, this detailed black. Like feathers or something on it. Bit hard to tell. And then we have a fur or fur like black coats of opaque tights. Okay, and now here we are at our cover feature. It says Supersonic in a colorful riot of 90s nostalgia for Supers. Linda, Cindy, 
Christy and Naomi talk about a new documentary on their fabulous lives and legacy. Sally Singer listens in. Photographed by Raphael Pavarotti. Didn't Sally Singer write the Nicole Kidman cover piece? And she also, didn't she write that piece about uh, losing weight after having a baby? Wow, she's been writing cover stories for Vogue for a long time. Especially because I could have sworn that Anna Winter called her like a dear friend or something in the first one in 2003. I bet she's done a lot of really interesting interviews in her career. So the ladies are having a, a wind-blown, glamorous time. To me, anonymity is so underrated generally. Darlington says, I like to blend in. I like to disappear. I agree. I think anonymity is great. I feel like it would be so hard for if you're a really famous person. What if you just need to get, you know, some trash bags at Target? You would have to send someone or it could be a meet and greet every time. And like super famous people would need security probably. Closer shot.
pastel, but that it's just not structured, you know, it's easy, and it's not defined by a certain color, you can just kind of use what you have, it's less prescriptive, just one thing. Okay, so we've got a piece on styling, a on styling two piece suits. So here we've got it in a knit cardigan with the bottom, then both pieces with the plunging top below. Here we've just got the jacket only with some other similarly toned accessories like this knit skirt, sort of long flowy coat. He is wearing his dinosaur onesie, it would appear. just got the pants with an unusual top situation, like kind of odd layering. I want to say that's the trend, sort of like mismatched odd layering sort of looks. I'm not sure what to call it. And here just the coat. Kind of just worn as any blazer. He's got a nice knit sort of cranberry sweater on. Here we have a collection of some items. It says, Sunday, best. Whether you're headed out and about or sticking close to home, elevate your weekend wardrobe this fall with a few choice pieces. Here we have more of that. Let me see what it calls it. It's number five. Oh, it doesn't describe it, but it's like, would that be called fringe? It's interestingly placed and we've seen it a bunch so far. I'll call it fringe, I think, and jot it down as a trend. So it's just saying like, here are some choice pieces to elevate your wardrobe. It doesn't really say much about it. Why those pieces specifically? Here's an ad for Act Now. This looks to be a UN awareness campaign about renewal, about renewable energy. QR code as well. This is an advertisement, and they're a little too sneaky with that because it's really in the fold and it's hard to see. Advertisement. Let's just skip over that. I feel like they should have to put that in bigger letters because they're trying to make it look like it's the magazine itself. Oh, and so then here we have some continued pieces. Like continued from the articles. So big pearl on the accessory. 
of a bohemian era, a bohemian period of fashion, and were looking and leaned much more towards very traditional, very structured looks. A huge trend seen in that magazine was something that they called classic textures, which was uh, fabrics like tweed, herringbone, and fur. We saw gowns with trains. We saw a lot of ruffles, a lot of belted trench coats, uh, blazers and jackets fitted, structured. So overall, the fashion felt very formal. Uh, it was also, there was a, a good amount of menswear inspired clothing. Lingerie inspired clothing was another big trend. And then there was a good amount of denim, specifically dark stretch denim, low rise denim. And that would be paired with the really formal things. Like with a, a tweed blazer, for example, just throw it in on. And as we flipped through this one, I mentioned that that was something I remembered. People are just throwing on a tweed blazer with jeans and, and some chandelier earrings. Uh, mini skirts were another pretty big trend. So for this year, for 2023, they really didn't get as specific about the things that were trends. One thing that was said explicitly in the letter from the editor was that the magazine would be showcasing romantic, rebellious fashion. And I feel like that rings true. Everything was so much more laid back in this year's compared to 20 years ago. From the pieces themselves to how they were styled. Like one of the trends was unusual combinations of things, mismatched looking things, uh, you know, just wearing like a top over a tie and a shirt, like a button-up shirt. There were also significantly more knits in general, just softer looking clothes, clothes that were not so structured as the 20, or as the 2003. Some other trends that we saw were furry and fuzzy things, and it was furry, not necessarily fur, like in 2003, which had a high amount of sort of classic fur things that were real fur and looked like they were, whereas these were more like fuzzy, sort of almost surely synthetic items, and they weren't meant to look traditional or real. Another trend we saw in the 2023 was fringy things. So it was like fuzzy things, fringy things. Then two of the more formal trends. 2023, because we saw quite a lot of long sleeve, long dresses, many of which were also turtlenecks, so very covered up. But even with that, it was much softer, more flowy than the gowns from 2003, which were like up and very structured and or traditional and or fitted. Overall, the clothing we saw in the 2023 was a lot more relaxed and experimental. One trend this year had in common with 2003 was that there was a fair amount of menswear, but it was styled in a much more uh, carefree way. So moving into the jewelry and accessory trends, one thing that both years had, which was really striking to me, was something that the 2003 folk writers called glam gloves. So you can see Naomi has some long leather gloves on in on the cover here. And both of these had a lot of those sort of upscale gloves. Short ones, long ones, leather ones, satin ones. Big years for gloves. I kind of like that as a trend for this year. It's fun. So some other jewelry and accessory trends from 2003 were tights. Especially opaque black tights and fishnet tights. Colorful statement rings, like big cocktail rings with bright colors, chandelier earrings, fur seen on the clothes and the accessories, and then what they called bold boots. And I, I feel like the, the boots were pretty classic, but it was just kind of a heavy boot presence, especially in higher boots. A lot of these are quite upscale, and they make 
house on accessories such as bags and shoes and pearls as accents and jewelry. I don't know if I've mentioned it in a video before, but I am a writer. I'm a copywriter and I write for a lot of brands and one of the things I write the most about is fine jewelry. And I'll say that pearls have been trending for quite a while, for several years, if not longer. But the, the trend with pearls lately has been more unusual pearls. So like Baroque pearls and, and more unusual shapes or pearls used in unexpected ways. So not like a pearl stranded necklace, which we did see in 2003, which makes sense with the very traditional looks, but uh, just like a, a pearl here and there or a pearl on an asymmetrical earring or something like that. But here we were seeing pearls as accents on bags and shoes, which is a little bit new, I think. Oh, and we saw like dangling pearls on a straw hat. It's fun. I like the use of pearls in the fresh way. It's fun to use that more traditional looking gem in ways that feel fresh and modern. And then also when it comes to like consumers, pearls can be made easily. So it's actually one of the more affordable gemstones, real pearls are. So another thing we saw a little bit of was linear drop earrings. That's something else that I just know has been trending uh, from my work. They're a newer trend, so uh, I kind of expected to see them when we were looking through. A linear drop earring is never out of style, but I just feel like we've been seeing them a lot more. People reaching for that instead of other kinds of more statement earrings, like the chandelier earrings that were super popular in 2003. Chandelier earrings aren't something that's necessarily ever gone out of style, it's just a type of earring, but it's kind of, you know, the way people wear it. I remember in 2003, people were thrown on a chandelier earring with a t shirt, and that's not something you really see nowadays. A chandelier earring is more reserved for a cocktail dress or like a black tie look. Another trend we saw in this, it wasn't explicitly named, but I feel like it was in enough times to call it a trend, was more jewelry like women's watches, something I've also been seeing a little bit. It's a shift away from the really oversized watches that have been so popular for women, and those aren't out of style, but it's just kind of like a newer, a newer trending option is, has arrived, you know? Okay, now, uh, on to cosmetic trends. Cosmetics and hair. So definitely the biggest cosmetic and hair trend we saw in 2003 was named explicitly several times, and it was a crimson lip. So sort of a slightly deep, but not dark red. And to me it looked like it had a little bit of a blue tone to it. Another thing they explicitly named was bold brows. So it was kind of like the brow and the lip were doing a lot of the work. And everything else is pretty chill. It's a very classic look, so it makes sense that that was the trend with these super classic clothing and accessory trends. Some other trends that they explicitly named were chic updos. Also pretty formal, so that makes sense. And a metallic smoky eye. And they specifically showed some dusty purple ones. One trend uh, that I noticed when we were flipping through was that there were a lot of men and women's fragrances. So like the same fragrance, but they had a men's version and a women's version. And I don't think we saw that at all in here. I feel like that doesn't happen a ton lately. I'm sure it still happens, but there were a lot in here. So I just thought well, that was an interesting thing that, that that was apparently a move a lot of fragrance companies were making in 2003. So there were two explicitly named uh, cosmetic and hair trends in the 2023 Vogue. A hair trend, they said, was a mini bang, which was like a super short bang. I really haven't seen that too much out in the world, and I wonder if I'll start seeing more people with that, or if that will be kind of more a thing you see in, like, fashion spreads and on, uh, people who need to look a certain way for a living, like a model or an influencer. The other trend they explicitly named was airy pastel eyes. So this is kind of a wash of color. Uh, I think they showed, the color they showed it was blue. So it's 
found me the most is the piece about the writer wanting to lose baby weight quickly because 2003 was very focused on thinness in a way that is not awesome in my opinion and I really hope that that is not coming back I also think that maybe the huge focus on media like television and movies that might be kind of a big sign of the times if you can think of something in this magazine if you watched this flip through I would love to know what you think is one of the biggest signs of the times in the 2023 it's easier because I'm currently in 2023 so I feel like I really I know what you know stands out to me and I know what people are talking about because I uh, am currently alive in the year I was alive in 2023 or 2003 and I can't really remember what people are talking about and I was also like young so I'm not sure I was as aware of the cultural conversation as I am now okay let's talk about the ad percentage so I counted the pages of ads versus content in both of these and it's similar but a little bit different so the 740 page September 2003 Vogue had 219-ish pages of content I say ish because I'm like hopefully I got it right but that makes it about 30% content and 70% ads in the September 2023 magazine there were 133 pages of content out of 370 making it around 36% content and 64% ads so both quite heavy but the newer one actually percentage wise had less ads and then of course page wise it had less ads i found myself in the 2003 one getting a little fatigued of the ads and i don't even think it was the page count of the sheer volume of them but it was that they were often for the same thing so you know the same brand would have a four page spread and then later they'd also have a three page spread and then there'd be like one more page for them just a little bit repetitive and then most of the ads are in the first to three quarters so it's just kind of like okay <laughs> wow it's a lot of ads and I, I do love looking at ads though generally but i honestly found it more enjoyable i feel like this amount and spacing in the 2023 is better so then some miscellaneous observations um one is that the, the repeat ads was present the 2023 did also have multiple page spreads and some returning but it just wasn't as kind of egregious as 2003 it's just intense and I, I i wonder so much like how much money it cost for these brands to put in ads in the 2003 versus now and i wonder like what was it like in 1993 too i feel like in 2003 magazines were still very big physical magazines in 2023 though not as much but i feel that lately like, there's more of a cultural shift in 2023 towards wanting more physical things towards seeking out a physical magazine instead of consuming everything digitally i think that you know having many things digitally is amazing but having everything digital is actually not great so i think there's more cultural appetite now for physical media than there was maybe five ten years ago i'm interested to see if magazines are gonna have a bit of a resurgence due to that or if they won't physical magazines i mean the time will tell oh and when it came to the ads one thing that was really noticeable in 2003 was that there were kind of a lot of department store and brand collab ads so you know it would say like this brand available at nordstrom so it's kind of an ad for both the brand and nordstrom and that was oh, there were a lot of those a ton of those whereas we really didn't see that in the 2023 one there were a few that said where where things were sold but it wasn't but it wasn't really the same as in the 2003 one when it came to the ads in this one
um, there was one trend that I really liked that I wouldn't mind if it came back, and it was that there were a lot of drawings, like sketched style ads, and I just think that's pretty, but I don't think we saw that much here. It was noticeable how many more there were in this, in the vintage one. Newly vintage, because it's 20 years old, and I think that's when things become vintage. In the modern ads, there were a lot of QR codes, and kind of a good amount of them of offered discount codes to get you to go to the, like, a website, or use the QR code. Both of these had sponsored ads that were designed to look like they were native in the magazine, so there would be, like, a tiny word saying advertisement, that's a standardish thing. In the new one, it wasn't so intense, though, except for there was one that had the word advertisement really close to the fold, and I think maybe they should have insisted on it looking a little more prominent, because you do need to label when something is an ad, you're not supposed to try and trick people, really, like, that's against, like, the law. <laughs> more comfortable because one of the things 